You wake up one fine morning and look out at the bright morning sun and go on to explore the day ahead. Throughout the day you come across many objects which are round in shape, such as wheels of a vehicle, bangles, dials of any clocks, coins, key rings, buttons of shirts, etc. In a clock, you might have observed that the second's hand goes round the dial of the clock rapidly and its tip moves in a round path. This path traced by the tip of the second's hand is called a circle. In this chapter, you will study about circles, other related terms and various properties and theorems of a circle. Brushing up You must have learned these concepts in earlier classes. The collection of all the points in a plane, which are at a fixed distance from a fixed point in the plane, is called a circle. The fixed point is called the center of the circle and the fixed distance is called the radius of the circle. A circle divides the plane on which it lies into three parts. They are 1. Inside the circle, which is also called the interior of the circle. 2. The circle. 3. Outside the circle, which is also called the exterior of the circle, see figure 10.4. The circle and its interior make up the circular region. Basic terminology related to circle. 1. Diameter, it is the longest chord of a circle and it is twice the radius. It's the chord which passes through center. 2. Circumference, it is the perimeter of a circle, given by C equals 2 pi R. 3. Chord, a chord is a line segment joining any two points lying on the same circle. 4. Arc, a piece of a circumference between two points is called an arc. 5. Sector, a portion of circle which subtends a certain angle at the center is called a sector. This is called a major sector and this is called a minor sector. 6. Segment, the region between a chord and either of its arcs is called a segment of the circular region or simply a segment of the circle. This one is the major segment and this one is the minor segment. Introduction Let us now examine the different situations that can arise when a circle and a line are given in a plane. There can be three possibilities. 1. The line PQ and the circle have no common point. In this case, PQ is called a non-intersecting line with respect to the circle. 2. There are two common points A and B that the line PQ and the circle have. In this case, we call the line PQ a secant of the circle. 3. There is only one point A which is common to the line PQ and the circle. In this case, the line is called a tangent to the circle. You might have seen a pulley fitted over a well which is used in taking out water from the well. Look at figure 10.2. Here the rope on both sides of the pulley, if considered as a ray, is like a tangent to the circle representing the pulley. Is there any position of the line with respect to the circle other than the types given above? You can see that there cannot be any other type of position of the line with respect to the circle. In this journey, we will study about the existence of the tangents to a circle and also study some of their properties. Tangent to a circle. In the previous section, you have seen that a tangent to a circle is a line that intersects the circle at only one point. The word tangent comes from the Latin word tangere, which means to touch and was introduced by the Danish mathematician Thomas Feynke in 1583. 1. There is only one tangent at a point of the circle. When we consider a line passing through a point on a circle, then it may again intersect the circle at another point or it may never intersect it again. When we rotate the line fixed to a point on circumference, we see that there is only one tangent at a point of the circle. 2. In other words, the tangent to a circle is a special case of the secant, when the two end points of its corresponding chord coincide. The common point of the tangent and the circle is called the point of contact and the tangent is said to touch the circle at the common point. Have you seen a bicycle or a cart moving? Look at its wheels. All the spokes of a wheel are along its radii. Note the position of the wheel with respect to its movement on the ground. Do you see any tangent anywhere? In fact, the wheel moves along a line which is a tangent to the circle representing the wheel. Also, notice that in all positions, the radius through the point of contact with the ground appears to be at right angles to the tangent. Theorem 1 The tangent at any point of a circle is perpendicular to the radius through the point of contact. Proof we are given a circle with center O and a tangent xy to the circle at a point P. We need to prove that OP is perpendicular to xy. Take a point Q on xy other than P and join OQ. The point Q must lie outside the circle. Why? Note that if Q lies inside the circle, xy will become a secant and not a tangent to the circle. Therefore, OQ is longer than the radius OP of the circle. 
That is, OQ is greater than OP. Since this happens for every point on the line XY except the point P, OP is the shortest of all the distances of the point O to the points of XY. So, OP is perpendicular to XY. Remarks. 1. By theorem above, we can also conclude that at any point on a circle there can be one and only one tangent. 2. The line containing the radius through the point of contact is also sometimes called the normal to the circle at the point. Number of tangents from a point on a circle. Case 1, there is no tangent to a circle passing through a point lying inside the circle. Case 2, there is one and only one tangent to a circle passing through a point lying on the circle. Case 3, there are exactly two tangents to a circle through a point lying outside the circle. T1 and T2 are the points of contact of the tangents PT1 and PT2 respectively. The length of the segment of the tangent from the external point P and the point of contact with the circle is called the length of the tangent from the point P to the circle. Are PT1 and PT2 equal? Can you guess why? Let's see. Theorem 2. The lengths of tangents drawn from an external point to a circle are equal. Proof. We are given a circle with center O, a point P lying outside the circle and two tangents PQ and PR on the circle from P. We are required to prove that PQ equals PR. For this, we join OP, OQ, and OR. Then angle OQP and angle ORP are right angles, because these are angles between the radii and tangents, and according to theorem 1 they are right angles. Now in right triangles OQP and ORP, OQ equals OR, radii of the same circle, OP equals OP, common. Therefore, triangle OQP is congruent to triangle ORP, RHS congruency. This gives PQ equals PR, CPCT. Remarks. 1. The theorem can also be proved by using the Pythagoras theorem as follows, PQ square equals OP square minus OQ square equals OP square minus OR square equals PR square, as OQ equals OR, which gives PQ equals PR. 2. Note also that angle OPQ equals angle OPR. Therefore, OP is the angle bisector of angle QPR, that is, the center lies on the bisector of the angle between the two tangents. Summary. In this video, we have studied the following important points. 1. Brushed up basics of earlier classes. 2. The meaning of a tangent to a circle. 3. The tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius through the point of contact. 4. The lengths of the two tangents from an external point to a circle are equal.